Well, good morning and welcome, everybody. Uh, it's a great pleasure to welcome you all to London and a particular pleasure to welcome President Hassan Sheikh Mahmoud um, as my co-chair today. I want to start with a, a, a small apology, which is that I will have to leave after the chair of the African Union has spoken, as I have to chair a cabinet meeting here in London, but I'll leave you in the capable hands of uh, Foreign Secretary William Hague. Here in this room, just over a year ago, we set out to help the Somali people to reclaim their country. And today, I think we are seeing the beginnings of a new future for Somalia. Extremism is in retreat. Amazon, together with Somali and Ethiopian forces, have driven Al-Shabaab out of town after town. Piracy attacks are down by 80%, with no vessel attacked so far this year. Government is moving ahead. Under the guidance of the UN and the African Union and EGAD, the transitional government that lasted eight years has ended, and now there is a proper, legitimate, and federal government in its place. And Somalia doesn't just have a new president, but also a new parliament chosen by representatives of all clans. The international community has kept the promises that we made last year. The UN Security Council resolution extended the mandate of African Union forces beyond Mogadishu and increased their numbers. Mauritius and the Seychelles have taken pirates for prosecutions, and 59 convicted pirates have been transferred to prisons in Somaliland and Puntland. And we're working together relentlessly to disrupt the travel and the financing of terrorists in the region. But the transformation in Somalia that we've seen has not happened just because 50 countries sat round a room uh, and a table uh, like this in London last year and somehow decided Somalia's future. This change has happened because of the vision of President Hassan Sheikh Mahmoud and his team and because of the strength and courage of the Somali people in beginning the long and difficult task of rebuilding their country from the bottom up. But for all the progress that we've seen, huge challenges lie ahead. Somalia still faces desperate poverty. Over 200,000 children under five are acutely malnourished, and just un under half of all Somalis live on less than one dollar a day. Despite the gains made against al-Shabaab, the recent tragic and despicable attacks in Mogadishu, including one just last weekend, remind us how much work there's still to do in the fight against terrorism and extremism. Now these challenges are not just issues for Somalia. They matter for Britain too and for the whole international community. Why? Because when young minds are poisoned by radicalism and they go on to export terrorism and extremism, the security of the whole world, including people here in Britain, is at stake. And to anyone who says this isn't a priority or we can't afford to deal with it, I would say that is what we've done in the past and look where it has got us, terrorism and mass migration. We made that mistake in the past, not just in the Horn of Africa, but also in Afghanistan in the 1990s. We must not make that mistake again. Today, <clears throat> nearly two-thirds of Somalis are under 25, but most young people don't join al-Shabaab because they believe in its perverted version of Islamist ideology. They do it because they are desperate for a few dollars and a mobile phone. So helping young Somalis to escape grinding poverty is not just vital for the future of Somalia, it's also the best antidote to the extremism that threatens us all. Somalis make a great contribution to our country here in the UK, and their remittances play a valuable role in Somalia, but many would like to return to rebuild their own country. We need to make it safe for them to do just that. Now let me turn to how I hope we can do that today. Supporting a new future for Somalia starts with the humanitarian relief that is so vital in alleviating some of the worst poverty anywhere on earth. I'm pleased that Britain is playing a leading role and saving lives and helping Somalis build resilience to future crises. And I hope others will follow. But Somalia's new future depends on more than humanitarian assistance. It's about the Somali government providing the security, the stability and services that are essential for people to secure jobs, to start new businesses and to provide for their families. That means supporting what I've called the golden thread of development the set of key conditions that are essential for growth all over the world. 
These encompass basic security for all, including the protection of women against sexual violence. That means a military that is effective and respects human rights. It means a police force that people run towards, not away from. And it means a justice system that is fair, dependable, and accessible to all who need it. <clears throat> it requires a government that is transparent and accountable in its use of resources and inclusive and representative of all parts of society. President Hassan Sheikh Mohamud is today setting out his plans in each of these areas, and I hope that as an international community, we can get right behind him. First, I hope that together we can back a long-term security plan to end al-Shabaab's reign of terror forever. I'm pleased that Britain will commit £10 million to help develop Somalia's armed forces and £14.5 million to double the number of police officers and to train judges and lawyers. Britain will also support the new maritime strategy, enabling full radio connection all along the entire coastline for the first time in 20 years. I hope that others here today will contribute too, and that countries in the region will stay the course and work with Somalia while it builds up its own forces. Second, we need to help Somalia develop a transparent and accountable government with an honest and accurate budget so that it can access the vital finance it needs to deal with its debts and to provide services to her people. Under the previous government, Somalia struggled with endemic corruption. So I very much welcome the commitment to public accountability that the President has made and the plan he's setting out here at this conference. Tomorrow we'll see a major international trade and investment conference with companies from all over the world looking at Somalia as a place to do business. But for investment to flow and for jobs to be created, people need to know where their resources are going. The international community must send a strong signal to the international financial institutions about the need to follow the World Bank's lead and help Somalia to deal with its debts and to access the vital finance that it needs. And I will seek support for this from my G8 partners when we meet at Loch Earn in Northern Ireland next month. Third, we must support the new Somalian administration as it takes the next steps in delivering a fully federal government in which everyone has a stake and a voice. That means continuing the process of rebuilding the Somali state in an inclusive way with all the regions of Somalia around the table. It means reaching beyond Mogadishu so all parts of the country see a demonstrable benefit from the new government and moving towards the ultimate goal of national elections in 2016, which we discussed this morning. And while Somalia must focus relentlessly on fighting terrorism, it will not bring its people together through military might alone. So there will need to be an opportunity for those who are willing to reject violence and to turn away from al-Shabaab to join the political process. Mr. President, I know that you face one of the most difficult tasks of any leader anywhere in the world, but it's only by bringing the people of your country together and by delivering the security, stability and services essential for jobs and growth that you can deliver the new future for Somalia that is within your grasp. For our part, let me assure you, we as your friends and partners will stand with you as you rebuild your country. We know that Somalia's future will be shaped by Somalia and with Somalia. This is not something being done to Somalia. Today, you're setting out your plans for your country. Our task is clear, to get behind you and your plans. That is what we will do. In her book entitled Keeping Hope Alive, Dr. Hawa Abdi, the physician and Nobel Peace Prize nominee, wrote about her time in the midst of Somalia's darkest hours. She said, hope is what remains as we wait for peace, even as we bleed and we starve. It may be that right now we are living for hope. Today, after two decades of bloodshed and some of the worst poverty on earth, hope is alive in Somalia. Now it's time to fulfill that hope for the people of Somalia. That is what they've been living for and waiting for, and we must not let them down. A few weeks ago, I planted a young sapling tree in the gardens at Villa Somalia in Mogadishu to raise the issue of deforestation. And it got me thinking, what does a young sapling need for it to grow into a strong health tree? 
It needs to be supported with a strong stake. It needs to be watered and fed, and it needs to be protected from animals that try to eat it, so it is soft pack and kill it. And so it's with this young sapling we have all planted together, call it Somalia. We need support, we need assistance and investment, and we need protection from those who try to knock us over. The first period of growth is always the most hazardous, where the most support and protection is needed. But as the bow thickens and strengthens, the tree needs less and less support until finally it stands broad and tall and strong, all on its own. My vision for a federal Somalia at peace with itself and its neighbors, and which poses no threat to the world, a Somalia with a resurgent economy, thriving small and medium-sized business, ventures, and sustainable employment so that families are properly provided for, a Somalia with values of kindness, respect, and human rights, all underpinned by an education system that harness our intellectual spirit. So we are here today to begin a four-year process that must begin with a considerable investment and support, but which I hope will finish with very little. Heads of states and governments, excellences, ambassadors, special representatives, honored guests, the Prime Minister and I welcome you to the second Somalia conference in London. Mr. Prime Minister, I wholeheartedly thank you and your government for your personal engagement in shaping our future and for your support in hosting this great conference. I particularly congratulate you for reopening your embassy on our soil in Mogadishu after more than two decades' absence. People may ask why Somalia matters at this time, but there is a huge amount at stake right now. The future of our country the security of the region and the world at large, and the removal of the piracy stranglehold on the Gulf of Aden. I know you all understand this, and I fully appreciate the political capital being invested to support Somalia. Since the last meeting held here in London more than a year ago, more has been achieved than anyone would have ever imagined. In just one year, the cornerstone of a new Somalia has been successfully and peacefully laid down. The political transition has ended, and I stand here as the elected president of a sovereign nation with an elected speaker leading a new parliament, representative of all the regions and all the Somali, all the clans and communities, and with a legitimate and effective government delivering six pillar policy framework the foundations of a new beginning in Somalia. Progress has defied the skeptics. Somalia has rejoined the world of communities. Under my leadership, we offer the world a legitimate partner you can trust, hard at work to deliver an integrated national security plan, economic reform, and a new financial management system. Rule of law and judicial reform, an environment conducive to commercial growth. We are achieving real progress week by week, month by month, but challenges do remain. Despite being militarily defeated, Al Shabaab have melted into the society and began a new phase of insurgency and a campaign of terror. An experience I know that Great Britain comprehends as well as any other. Our constitution is only partially complete. Piracy must come to an end. Millions of Somalis still live in desperate conditions as refugees in neighboring countries and as internally displaced persons in their own country. And we lack developed government institutions schools, hospitals, roads, sanitation, and other basic services. As you will hear over the coming hours, however, we came to London to share with you 
our detailed plans to address these challenges. We are building our army forces. We are restructuring and developing our police force. We are reforming our justice sector. And we are revolutionizing our public finance management systems. We are driving Somalia for emer from emergency to recovery and from recovery to development and reconstruction. Ultimately, however, it will be a Somali-owned solution that will fix Somalia. But, not, but no country has ever recovered from such social and economic collapse without the help of the world. And so, in partnership with our endeavors, we respectfully ask for your total and unflinching commitment, partnership, and support to Somalia. We hope that you will agree how you can support the implementation of our plans and put an end to our dependence on the international community. The federal government of Somalia has laid down the foundation is for a new public finance management mechanism, which we believe will give enable our donors to agree funding arrangements with the confidence that funders will reach their intended recipients. The progress that has been made in Somalia over the past three years would not have been possible without the courageous support of IGAD, the African Union, our brothers and sisters in Amazon, and the ultimate sacrifice made by many brave African soldiers. We owe to it their memory to ensure that we do not take one single step backwards. The progress that has been made in Somalia over the past three years would also not have been possible without the committed support of the United Nations, the United States, the United Kingdom, and the European Union. We owe it to the publics who contribute to these governments and institutions to see this process through a, a conclusive in conclusion. We are also indebted to the kindness and generosity of countries like Turkey, Norway, the Arab League, member states, and other countries. Your assistance over the past few years has spread hope and belief among our people. We welcome Ansom, the new United Nations mission in Somalia, and we are grateful for the consultations offered in agreeing both the mandate and the appointment of the new SRSG in Somalia. We congratulate His Excellency Mr. Nicholas K. on his appointment as the new SRSG. We are looking forward to receiving him and the new UN mission in Mogadishu soon. I wish to thank Ambassador Mahiga, the outgoing SRSG, for his relentless and determined effort in leading the design of the roadmap and seeing the transition through. Our best wishes and tribute go to him. The people of Somalia are eternally, eternally grateful. Winning the war in Somalia has been proven. Winning the peace in Somalia will take patience and great skills. We are at a critical junction. The time is now. We have little time today and lots to achieve. All of us, especially those in the background who have worked so hard to make this conference happen, will want to depart with a real sense of progress. I thank you all for coming and for your dedicated support for Somalia. Together, we can make Somalia strong again, a tree standing tall in the African bush with deep roots binding it, is, it securely to its region and offering shade and protection to its people as they rebel, rebuild their lives. I thank you. When we met a year ago, 
the European Union, along with the rest of the international community, committed to standing by the Somali people, and we have kept our promise. There have been continued progress on the security side. Al-Shabaab have been driven out of large parts of Somalia. The number of piracy attacks has been drastically reduced over the past year. I pay tribute to the African Somali troops, definitely including AMISO, and to the international naval forces, including the EU's operation at Atalanta, that have achieved this. It has created the space in which a new, inclusive federal state can be built on solid foundations. But the task is not yet over. The Al-Shabaab threat needs to be eliminated and full control over the territory of Somalia established. An agreed federal structure needs to be put in place so that there is a clear political authority for the security services. Therefore, both security and political tracks must continue to be pursued urgently. The status quo is not stable or sustainable. Security is essential for Somalia's reconstruction. I therefore welcome the framework for national security plan presented today. We now have a clear view of the needs of the Somali armed and police forces and the areas where we, the international community, can assist. The European Union is committed to help Somalia put in place these essential building blocks for a viable state. The European Union commitment to Somalia is solid and long term. Over the past five years, we have committed nearly 1 billion euro to the country. AMISOM's role has been critical, and the European Union remains committed to supporting it. I am pleased that on top of more than 400 million euro committed so far, we will be able to provide a further 35 million euro to AMISOM for the coming months. But the needs are still there. And I again appeal for other donors to help support Amazon as long as it is needed. In the long term, so, it must be Somali forces themselves that ensure security. The EU training mission, EUTM, is providing direct support for the development of Somali armed forces, increasingly inside Somalia itself. We are also supporting the development of the Somali police forces and to the establishment of national coastal police capacity through of the work of EU CAP NESTA. Security goes hand in hand with justice and the rule of law. A credible system of justice will be crucial to establishing a safer environment, rebuilding the trust of the people in the state, and reconciling the nation. Equitable access to justice and independent judiciary underpin a viable state. Consultations are now underway in Somalia following the Justice Conference President Hassan Sheikh convened in April. I encourage this process and hope it will be as inclusive as possible. To support work of the rule of law, the European Union will be providing a further 44 million euro in support of police, justice and governments. On top of this and the contribution to Amazon, the European Union is providing through EUTM, Operation Atalanta, and USCAP Nestor more than 100 million euros this year to Somalia. Long-term security requires trust and cooperation between neighbors. I pay tribute as well to the efforts of Somalia's neighbors to combat terrorism and bring stability to the region. We are all committed to a common goal of building a stable, peaceful, and prosperous Somalia. I therefore welcome continuing efforts to establish good relations and effective cooperation between all the countries of the region and the work of our essential partners, the African Union and IGAD in this respect. Finally, so security is vital, it is only part of the picture. The European Union looks forward to working with Somalia and international partners to support Somali people in the reconstruction of their country. This will be a primary focus of the Brussels conference later this year on 16th of September 
when we will seek to enshrine support for Somalia's overall reconstruction in the New Deal Compact to be endorsed then. Thank you.